Hi writers and welcome to week 13. This week we are officially selecting our topics for research for the research essay. We're gathering sources and synthesizing those sources and we're moving forward with our exploration, our discovery into those topics. We have two discussions this week. The first discussion is from the book They Say I Say. It's chapter five. It's titled, And Yet Distinguishing What You Say From What They Say. We did not actually adopt this book, but you may have purchased it from the bookstore. It was one of the recommended books for this course. Um, we're looking at just a chunk of it, which is making sure that you understand that they say is the viewpoints of your research, scholars, doctors, sociologists, psychologists, um, people who collect data. It could be um, a government website. It could be uh, FDA website. It could be uh, a, a variety of different sources, any of the article database journals from the VC database, um, but basically they say is other other people's point of view, I say is your view. Um, and so for this discussion, you are going to read the chapter five from they say I say, it's linked here. Um, you can also click on an audio link if you want to look at the reading while you are listening to the reading. That's they totally say, up to you. I say chapter five. So again, we have two sources. You have the audio and the actual book itself. You're going to read chapter five, take good notes in your journal about um, what the chapter is teaching you, about distinguishing your own voice as a writer from the sources that you are gathering. Remember, in this essay, I'm asking you to synthesize your sources. You're going to summarize your sources, and you're also going to jump into the conversation with your own viewpoint. So in this discussion, reading chapter five, taking good notes in your journal, um, and then you're going to jump on to the discussion and practice. You're posting two paragraphs to the discussion, a summary, a paragraph summary of chapter five. If you need um, help with verbs for says, I have a link here. So 100 ways to say said, instead of just saying so-and-so says, so-and-so says, right? When you're doing summary, you're gonna expand your verbiage, um, push yourself a little bit further, um, and then you're writing a, top, a summary of your chosen topic so far. So when I say summary, I mean who is speaking on your problem or your topic. In a bulleted list like the one below, tell us the voices that are speaking out on your topic. What are the views or viewpoints on your topic? So here are some examples here. If I had the topic of sexual assault on college campus, I might use some of the following sources. So I actually gathered some sources. Um, so again, you're just listing. Paragraph one is a summary of chapter five, practicing those summary skills. So no I in that summary, just a recap of the chapter the most important information. And then paragraph two is listing the sources or the voices from your, your um, conversation. So really depends on what your conversation is. Don't forget to read and respond to someone else's post. Um, that's what's happening for this discussion. If you go back to the homepage, you'll see the second discussion. In this discussion, you'll have, you have to have done the discussion before because you're setting up your thesis. So we have one here, we have two different templates. You're going to use one of the templates or Mad Libs below um, and for setting up your conversation. When you, if you do this successfully, you can cut and paste this into your research essay in your introduction somewhere, and it can also become your thesis. So we have an example of what that looks like. What I did was I just took one of these templates. I took the, conver the conversation or the topic of sexual assault on college campuses, um, and I turned it into a template here. So in discussions of sexual assault on and rape on college campuses, most of us would readily agree that this is a social problem that should be addressed immediately, but it is also one that we as a society rarely discuss. On the one hand, sociologists argue one in five women will be sexually assaulted during her time in college, a statistic that most would find most fr both frightening and unacceptable. On the other hand, the Hunting Grounds documentary reveals the problem of violating a person's body and mind runs deeper and is much more toxic at universities than most people realize. Meanwhile, Chanel Miller, the courageous rape victim from the Stanford case of 2015 against Brock Turner, wrote a book about her experience and how damaging and unsupportive the media is towards rape victims coming out. Then there's a TED Talk by Karen Francis Ng about how we can empower sexual assault and rape victims so that they can survive and move beyond the trauma and violence against them. My own view is we need to create more spaces and opportunities to speak honestly about rape culture and address the, and educate people on the reality of sexual assault. It is never okay to violate a person in that way. So again, I just took the topic of sexual assault, which many people are already interested in, 
and I took one of these templates and I kind of just made up my own argument here. The whole purpose of this is to show which voices are speaking in your conversation. This would be in the introduction of your essay and throughout your essay you would break that down. So again, that's the second discussion. You cannot do this discussion until you have completed the first one where you've set up the voices in your conversation. So it's going to require you to do a little bit of research. Um, so stay focused, um, keep your eye on the prize, which is gathering sources and writing up that research paper, having a strong argument about wherever you stand regarding your topic. Um, and then also there's some formatting and citing MLA sources. You guys, many of you have the MLA um, Little Seagull Handbook. Um, we also have stylemla.org, which Ray showed us in the tutoring center. And then we have the Al Purdue website. Again, those sources are here for you. Have a great week 13. Stay focused. The research that you do now this week, this upcoming weeks, is going to help push you into the research essay and the research unit really strong. You want to start off really strong so you can just keep moving forward so you're not waiting until the last minute. You will not pass this research essay if you wait until the last minute. I am grading based on um, are you able to write a college research, research essay. Super important. Um, so again, I'm here if you need me. Ray in the tutoring center is available. You have lots of people who have your back, so you have to seek out help or seek out those resources. Have a wonderful time researching, um, discovering ideas, um, and just playing with sources out there. There's so many sources, so enjoy it.